Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I'm standing inside of the only hoop house space that I have. I think this is an eight by 10 foot little greenhouse and I mean, <laughs> it was it's one of those ones I think that cost less than $200. I put it together last spring and I used it to harden off my seedlings. I put tables in here and I use this, uh, you know, when it was like nearing my last frost date to harden off my seedlings and put them in the ground. So I thought I was gonna leave it up, which I did, but we just broke it. <laughs> we just broke it. We were getting the ice off the, the top of it because there was a little, but there was one section that was really thick and when we lifted it up and it slid down the side, the ice cut a hole into it and you just saw Brad patching that up. So. Thank you, Brad Pitt. Oops, we probably should have um, gotten the ice off of it earlier, but I didn't realize it had formed such a, a thick layer of ice because we've had 40 degrees the last couple of days, so all the snow was melting and then it was freezing again at night. So it formed uh, basically an ice dome right here on the roof and when we pushed it off, it slid down, sliced a hole, Okay, next year we'll make sure we do that during the day when it's warm, when it's melting, and not let it freeze into a giant ice chunk the next day. I was terrified that it was gonna collapse because the ice was that thick. It was, I mean, I showed you a shot of it. It's like six inches thick. Okay, so in here, the ground is not frozen. So everyone keeps asking me, wow, you started your sweet peas. Oh, you started your ranunculus. Oh, don't you have three feet of snow on the ground? Yes, I do. I am going to be putting the first round of them in here. I can probably fit uh, you know, a few dozen sweet peas and then a few dozen ranunculus. I'm not going crazy with them, but my first, the, I have the LaBelle ranunculus. We'll go in the basement and I'll give you guys an update on all the things that I started, but the LaBelle ranunculus is out of control taking off. That needs to get in the ground as soon as possible. And I'm walking around in here and it's it's muddy. It's not, um, it's not super muddy, but it's it's soft. So it's the ground's not frozen in here, which is a great sign. Plus, I have frost cloth that I'll be using in here when the temperatures dip below, you know, into the teens and stuff. Because remember, ranunculus is hardy. My friends all around me, all of my flower farmers around me already have theirs in the ground. So that's not a concern here. I'm super pleased with this. I mean, we live in upstate New York and we've gotten, what have we gotten, like four or five feet of snow so far this year? We've gotten several feet of snow and uh, it held up. Clearly that ice, we just put a little dent in it right here. When the ice came down, not only did it slice the side, but it dented the pole, but it's, it's a very, very small dent. I'm not concerned about it. So let's go in the basement and I'll give you guys an update on some of the stuff that I have growing downstairs. This is our lovely snow bank. It's not that much. Don't worry, it'll be gone soon. Exhibit A. <laughs> this is where I fell the other day and I spilled all the chicken food. But that was actually a good thing because we found a bird, we saw a bird we've never seen before ever this weekend. They're called snow buntings and they're gorgeous and they were coming to eat it. So it was a good thing. My fingers are freezing. Anyway, okay, so we're back down in the basement. I've got an excited boxer down here. She's gonna go crazy and <laughs> make noises and chase her tail. Uh, so we have, let's see, this is the second round of ranunculus. This is round two, I need to water these. So these won't be going out uh, for probably another uh, month. This is the first round of butterfly ranunculus and I'm gonna get these in the ground as soon as I can. That's just but what it is. As soon as I can, um, but these are nice deep cells so I'm not worrying about getting these out there right now. I have a couple of these. Here are some sweet pea babies. I will be pinching these and I pinch them above the first true leaf and then they will uh, branch out for me. So this is a variety called Old Times and it's really pretty. And I'll be putting these outside as soon as I can work the soil. So when we start to get uh, up into the 40s here, which our two week forecast most days are above freezing. So our snow will start to melt and it will melt pretty quickly. So hopefully, you know, a month from now, we'll be able to have all of these plants in the ground. To the other shelf. I still haven't merged my shelves together yet. What I, the plan is to put all of the shelving units next to each other. And that just hasn't happened yet. Okay, 
I think I'm just gonna bring this stuff over here because the lighting over here is just that much better. I'll be right back. Here is a tray of Lizzie's. This is a tray of Lizzie's, and they're they're the ones that I potted up. I I think I've lost a few, but all of the ones that I've lost are on the edges. So I have a tendency to. Uh, lose things around the edges and that's because they just don't get enough water they're the first things to dry out same thing happens to me with soil blocks and and everything so anything that is on the edge I'm more likely to lose like this one right here actually looks like it's drying out um, and it's right there the one with the actual tag in it this is an echo champagne nope that's not echo it's super magic champagne echo champagne is right here oh my gosh they're doing so well and I I don't know. A lot of people um, don't realize how slow Lysianthus grows. Some of these are getting their third sets of leaves and uh, some are still really tiny. That's just how it goes. I would say the ones that are doing best for me are ABC White, ABC Yellow, Echo Champagne. Um, what are some of these? Well, Super Magic Champagnes aren't doing horrible either, um, but that's what this tray is. And then um, the Black Pearl, I'll go grab that. So this tray, if you if it'll focus for you guys, this tray is like black pearl and uh, roseanne green. So they're the roseannes. And some more super magic green. Those ones are doing great. Third set of leaves are popping on uh, a lot of them. So yeah, I'm super happy with the Lizzie's. And what week is this? This is week eight. So this weekend, th this is week eight with Lizianthus. Eight week old babies and they're still so tiny. I love them is a look at one of my eucalyptus babies. I only have two that look like they're doing really well. So, um, who knows if I'll have it make it. I don't know if my conditions are just not good down here for eucalyptus, but I have a, such a struggle. It does really smell good though. Some other things that I have growing down here, I started some Eryngium or some Sea Holly. I have the blue kind, I have Rattlesnake Master, and I have another white one as well. Uh, they're, they're all really cool looking and they're perennial here. So that'll be a really great thing to get established. I'll have a nice patch of them. I also have some Delphiniums that are started and on the heat mat and the rest of the Lysianthus. And they germinated fantastic, I'm really happy. I did those straight into the 200 plug trays because I had room on the heat mat. So what else am I starting? I am gonna be starting today my foxglove, which I'll do in soil blocks. And I'm also starting stock. So uh, stock is something that is a uh, cool flower and you can start that um, outside. So the dogs are running again. So after the, the gnat issue that I had and I lost a lot of my Lizzie babies, I did end up with six complete 200 plug trays of Lysianthus plus the two others that I started. So I have uh, you know, 1,200, 400, 1,600, 1,600 Lysianthus so far. I'll probably lose a few more over the next couple of months before I get them in the ground. So it is what it is. And did I tell you, I don't know if this, I, I just did this um, in my Instagram stories or if I said this on a video, but a local gentleman who also grows some cut flowers, he brought me over uh, an entire tray of Lysianthus, an entire 264 babies. I'll show that to you right now. He brought me over this tray and he used soil blocks and he want, he told me to bump them up, but they're all growing beautifully. I'm not sure if I will bump them up, but um, yeah, super, super healthy looking plants and his soil blocks are super sturdy. I want to ask him what he used to make his soil blocks because you can pick them up and move them around. They're not falling apart. So uh, I'll probably give him a call. His name is Mark and I'll be giving him a call and asking him what medium he used to make his soil blocks because I'm super happy with them. So thank you very much, Mark, for these babies and they're gonna look great. Speaking of soil and what to use in the soil blocks, I had been using the Lambert and while it's holding up and some of that stuff's been in the soil blocks for six weeks now, it's holding up, but not as well as the Vermont compost, the Fort V mix that I had been using last year. And uh, so, I bought a couple bags. I couldn't help it. I loved the way that it held up. Hi. Hi. I'll show it to you. Are you running from the camera? <laughs> Are you crawling out of the way? Mm -hmm. We can still see you. <laughs> this is the Vermont Compost Fort V mix that I used last year. I mean, 
it really is great stuff other than it is expensive. That's the only thing. Like this bag right here was $25 plus shipping. So <laughs> it does make several thousand soil blocks, uh, but when it's compared to the $8 of the Lambert, that's how much you pay for the bag of Lambert. Um, but I did notice that it's not holding up as well as the Fort V did. So I have ordered, I bought, I bought four, four of these bags. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Not really that heavy. So I did get four of these bags for when I start my heavy soil blocking, which won't be for another, probably four weeks is when I'm gonna be like deep in seed planting time. All the soil blocks, like thousands and thousands and thousands of them. I lost a friend today. That hydrangea and that nine bark. Do you see the snow about to fall off my roof? Well, it fell off right here and I lost it. This was a hydrangea. That was a nine bar. Very nice to be back on the porch again, even if it's to shovel up snow. That was, <laughs> be careful, don't hit the camera. There he goes again. He's knocking off more ice and snow. Uh, yeah, I lost a nine bark and I lost a hydrangea. <laughs> he just got hit in the head with a piece of snow. Right on top of my nine bark. I knew that was gonna happen. I, um, I had planned on moving those. So I need some herbaceous things that like die back to the ground and grow back every year underneath my porch because of the snow load that falls off. So please, in the comments, let me know what you think that I should be growing as herbaceous. Okay, there's only about two and a half hours of sun there. So it needs to be something that loves the shade. So definitely hostas, but what else? What can I put there that will like that area and then die back to the ground so I don't have to worry about the snow killing it every year. So I was telling my father how I fell multiple times on the snow and uh, a lot of you guys suggested that I get those like snow tracks for my boots. I actually bought him a pair last year because he was having the same issue and he's bringing them to me so that I can wear them now. Uh, watch your step dad, not even funny dad. <laughs> Be careful, I'm serious. Okay. So I'm outfitted now with these thingamabobbers. And uh, it's just ironic that he was falling last year. I bought them for him. I'm falling this year. Oh, they feel a little weird. Where's the other one? Okay, so the brand is Tingly. It's tingly. <laughs> the brand name on this is Tingly. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So they look like this. And you just put them on the outside of your shoe. Please don't throw. Please don't. Oh. <laughs> you missed. I can hear it. Oh, this is the real slip part right here. going right in. Oh my gosh. Yay. Okay. I came upstairs because things were just getting a little hectic with the dogs and the kids. And um, so anyway, I just wanted to talk to you just briefly about sweet peas because I was not planning on doing a sweet pea starting video. Um, I just can't do a video on every single seed that I start. I'm starting over a hundred varieties. So sweet pea are, they're a hearty annual. So they can take a frost. They can take a little bit of a freeze. In fact, they're fine uncovered down to 25 degrees. So says the research. I had them out last year. They were hit with frosts. They were hit with freezes and I didn't have an issue. So I am planning on putting those out because I have a lot of people saying I didn't start my sweet peas yet. Oh my gosh. Well, that's okay. I'm just starting it because I have a little bit of a protection. I have tunnels that I'm using, stuff like that. So the sweet peas, I am going to be putting out as soon as I can. And remember, I am pinching those sweet peas. So they look like they're six inches tall right now, but I'm gonna be pinching them back to right above their first set of true leaves. So that's like more than half of the plant that I pinch back and then they'll start to branch out from right below where I pinched them. So that's a little bit of an explanation for the sweet peas, but anyway, I am going to be putting them out as soon as I can and then I'll be using frost cloth to cover them when I need to. So we'll see, fingers crossed. I cannot wait until I get an actual hoop house because whew, 
things are going to get exciting. So I'll be able to focus on the hoop house and everything that's going in there instead of getting so amped up to start the rest of my seeds as I'm sure all of you guys are right now. Everybody's, well, some of you guys can because you're in a different climate, but for being here, we have to wait a little bit longer to start our the majority of our seeds. So as we get started into like heavy seed starting and like farm season, a lot of my videos are gonna be more vlog style, just showing you, hey, here's what's going on, here's a look at this, here's a look at that. That's the way that I have to go about when it's busy season because I just don't have the time to put together the, the longer format type videos that I have time to do in the winter. So vlog style will be more like it going forward, which I'm excited about because those are my favorite videos to make because you just never know what's gonna happen. So anyway, that's what's going on today. I'm gonna go start all of those seeds that I was talking about earlier and make my soil blocks and stuff like that. So I am gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Lambert and the Fort V. I'm gonna have the same exact seeds in the same exact conditions and I'm gonna see if one performs better than the other or holds up better than the other. I think I love comparisons and it's also good to know, you know, everybody likes something different. So what works for me might not work for you or vice versa. So anyway, it's just fun to do experiments. That's what I love to do. Thanks for tagging along with me as I was checking out my grow room today. I'm gonna go get the anemones out of the water. I forgot them down there. I put them in the water and I forgot to take them out. So I've got to go take them out of my little watering um, thing that I have going on down there and uh, get those seeds started, make some soil blocks and get that going. I'm excited about seed starting. It's almost here. We're almost in full force. So thank you guys. See you soon. I have some big plans for my grow room. I can't wait to share you guys. I'm sharing you. I'm sharing ideas with you. I'm like slipping on the ice. I've fallen twice now. Okay, so. I'm getting back onto some icy area. The chickens have found their way. <laughs> oh, you wanna be with me? Yeah. Aren't you precious? Aren't you precious? The ground is not frozen in here. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't do that. There, there's a chunk of ice in there that's really, really big. I cannot lift it. I'm afraid, actually. I hear snowmobiles. Are you going off on a ride, babe? You gonna do something? He's gonna do something. Cause it's 41 degrees out. It's like springtime here. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> 